Hi, I'm Trevor Brazil here with Miles Baker today. Welcome to Relentless Insights brought to you by Cactus. Today we're going to be talking to you about slow cattle and where they play a role in our program from young horses all the way up to our most seasoned horses. I feel like it's probably obvious that we start with slow cattle and we have a pen of just just trainers and they'll be mixed from old old steers that walk, trot, lope, uh, we'll have some jerseys, we'll rope some jerseys or dairy calves that, you know, are light for our head horses when they are learning to pull. But the thing is, is we'll, we'll never really get away from those cattle. We'll mix them. Some days we'll rope hard runners, or not hard runners, but, but full contact steers. And then we'll come back to these. Some days we mix our herd, uh, depending on what we're roping on that day. The only reason we won't mix them is sometimes it's just so many. If we're trying to execute a certain exercise on one horse, we won't bring up 40 head of steers to have to just get through to the ones we want. But a lot of times we'll take, I'm on a four year old here. I've been showing him. I'll definitely always mix it up because I never want him to forget any part of the process. and it's important that they score it's important that they run and as important that they rate and read the cow and in order to do that you have to a lot of people can cover up a lot of rate issues with running cattle or cattle that are stronger in in my opinion i like to let a slower cow out a long ways almost like a cheyenne start if the arena permits to where i know that the horse is going to have to pick him up out in front of him far enough and run towards him, but also knowing that we're gonna be covering a lot of ground on that steer and that when he gets there, he's gonna to have to rate or he's gonna look silly. And so that's really the only way. I think you're kidding yourself a lot of times if you think you've moved on from slow cattle and still have a horse that has a lot of rate because if the cow's running fast enough, rate's never an issue. He's always staying in front of you. We have people all the time say, they like, they like to rope the cattle in the 12 or the cattle in the 13, but you know, it's somebody that would have the best chance winning, you know, if they were roping in the number nine or 10 and it, what it boils down to is they're, they don't have to have their horse rate on those cattle. You know, that, like he said, you can cover up rate with the speed of the cow and it's putting a bandaid on an issue. Cause I mean, it don't matter what roping you're in, you may come back high call back and draw the doodler in the short round and your horse is gonna have to work. You know, he's, he's got a rate. And if you implement that into young horses from the beginning, that, that thought will always cross their mind. If they're, like he said, if he scores one out and runs to it and you just have it imprinted in that horse's head that he has to break his stride down and slow down when he gets to a cow, that should stay with them. And, but if you're more comfortable roping fast cattle and you just put a band-aid on your riding or your horse's lack of rate or whatever that may be by just running fast cattle all the time, that problem's gonna arise at some point to where you're gonna draw that slow cow and it's gonna you know, make you whatever you think it does to you in your mind, whether it's split the horns or your horse gets strong and sets up the steer, whatever that may be, you're putting a band-aid on it where maybe you like roping fast cattle, that's perfect rope your fast cattle, but have a few slow ones in the pen too, where you can in, start your practice maybe, or in, and end your practice by just tracking a slow one. Let your horse get to that spot and settle and follow him to the end of the arena. It's not gonna take two minutes out of your day to just keep it in your horse's mind that he, he may, if he's gaining real fast, he's gonna have to slow down and follow that cow. It's gonna, it's gonna pay dividends in the end. Yeah, it's almost like throwing a pop quiz on them every once in a while just to make sure they're thinking. And, and the, the more often you do do that, the more they're looking for it when it happens and it doesn't take them you know, by surprise so much. But even when I was strictly rodeoing for a living, my practice herd consisted of everything, big, small, fast, medium, slow, uh, for that reason. And even healers i think it's great because you're going to go to ropings that have little fast hopping natives or big slow hopping mexican steers um, it just you need to not be 
doing one certain scenario your whole time because it never fails. That's not the one you're going to see that weekend at the rodeo. Yeah, and just to add to that, I've got a couple orders to fill for uh, a head horse for an older gentleman that doesn't get to rope a lot. And then I have one for a guy who heals primarily, um, wants something that he can head on some and that his 12 year old boy can head on. So we had a horse come back in the other day. Uh, some people weren't utilizing and he's good enough to help on and everything. But the first thing I did when he came back was I run the trainers in, I scored them out 30 foot in front of the head box and I dropped my hand in the first three strides I kicked like I was getting out run and I let him run to the cow just to see if that horse gathered his stride and rated because the orders that I have to fill for horses right now, they need that. And, and whether they like roping those kind of cattle or not is irrelevant. I need to know if I call them and tell them I have a horse that'll work for them that if if they blow up there, that sucker's not gonna get strong in the bridle and wanna run by the cow. He's gonna rate, let them take as many swings as they want and let them enjoy roping. They're not gonna have to fight him trying to get him to rate. And Miles brought up a good point. You know, when he, people ask us to fill an order for a horse or like they have this list uh, that they wanna check the boxes on when they have those horses. And so we always have those people in mind when, when we are looking at horses because we see a lot of horses, but there's just because they're a great horse doesn't mean it's going to be a great fit for everybody. You got to kind of know your customer and know that, you know, when we do have these horses in training, that's, that's a completely different animal. We want them to be able to go from this end of the spectrum to this end of the spectrum. Cause I've said it a thousand times, a great horse fits in all those boxes, but there's a lot of horses that, that, uh, fit would fit a lot of people they just may not be you know the right combination at that time one thing that I, i've heard people say it forever is like i like running faster cattle it makes me be more aggressive well like i just talked about a second ago if you throw a good medium good patterned cow in the pen and let most people run it and they can just kind of swing their rope chase the cow with their rope they don't have to rate their horse they don't have to go right and left to do all this different stuff it's just like standing there roping the dummy, 99% of people are gonna be more comfortable running that cow. Well, if we can have a horse or train a horse that if the cow comes left, it doesn't affect the horse's position. Cow goes right, doesn't affect the horse's position. The cow runs, most horses, as long as they can catch up, are gonna feel better on that cow than a cow that's slow. But say you got the slow cow, your horse rates that cow the same as he would feel if he was chasing a runner and got caught up if if that doesn't change then that person's outlook on the kind of cattle he's roping and his position and his confidence doesn't really change either if if that horse can give him the same go every single time a lot of people take the rate out of a horse by the complete opposite way that you would think and it's by pulling and not riding to the cow if you'll watch like even when we're riding, roping slower cattle, we're, we ride to the cow, and then when we get there, we quit because now this next maneuver takes over where they just hold the cow. And if you're just coasting to the steer, pulling back the whole time, you know, the horse never realizes one thing is stopped and another one begins. It's just, it just keeps flowing and so since they left the box to when they got to the cow, you've just been coasting and pulling. And so they're naturally going to try to get to where you throw your rope or do a different command. And that doesn't happen until you get comfortable enough to swing. So you can't, you can't start your run by pulling and swinging because at the end of the week that you've practiced on that horse, he's just going to be numb to all of that. And he's just going to try to do what he knows you're doing you're trying to go until sometimes they'll rope and turn off and that's his release and so you just have to have good signals with your horse